applause and let them know how much you appreciate them, the incredible job they do every Sunday. So, so good. Are you happy to be here? Good, man. So good to see so many of you, some of you to see you for the first time in a long time. So glad you're back. Hey, let's do something a little bit different today because we have the church family here, but we have the church family way out there, literally joining us from all around the world online. You guys in here, let's welcome you guys out there, all right? Give them a round of applause, okay? Good deal. Go ahead and grab a seat. And as you sit down, I want first and foremost to, for you to grab your Bible. I want you to have a Bible. I want you to be in God's Word, studying it, reading it, memorizing it, meditating on it. Please make sure you have a Bible. And uh, if you don't have one, grab one of those uh, that's in the seat in front of you. If you see one of those there, we will... Gladly let that one be your Bible, a gift from us to you. Please, those of you at home, in your living room, or wherever it is that you are meeting with others, you grab a Bible as well as we go to God's Word and we study. We've realized in this series that we've been in just how important it is that we be in God's Word, discovering the truth. So, with that being said, we begin today a message called Predator and pray. The series is called Imposter. This is the third week. We've been talking about Satan and the attacks of Satan, but today we're talking about the predator and the prey. And even as I say those words, I want you to ask yourself the question, who is the predator and who is the prey? Who is the predator and who right now is the predator's prey? Father, we thank you so much for the moment that we have here together as we come to discover your word, to look for your truth, to have your spirit speak to us, to have our eyes opened and our hearts set on fire. Father, we ask that that is what would happen here today. That as we just sang, that we would indeed rise up in this battle that is in front of us, that you would give us boldness, that you would well equip us, Father, Father, we know you're with us. We know you strengthen us. We know if we lack wisdom, we ask of you and you give it to us. Father, we ask all those things here this morning. May you speak. May we listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we go to God's word in 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 8 and on through verse 9. And I want you to grab a pen, and right as we begin, I want you to circle the first two words. The first two words, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring, now do me a favor, underline the word roaring. We're going to come back to that a little bit later, okay? Like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him. And be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering that you are. Somebody just sent me a message yesterday. So much pain, so much hurt all around us. And I thought that certainly is true. And you've seen it. I've seen it. It's not just here, but it's all over. And so much pain we see and so much hurt. But why is it that we see that pain and that hurt? I believe we find it right here. That there is a predator and there are those who are this predator's prey. There is predator and there is prey. According to what we just read, we realize Satan is a predator. It says that he is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. But we also find right here who, are, who the prey is. The prey, it's you and me. It's us. It's we. He's the predator and we are the prey. I told you guys several years ago, Kim and I were taken by Compassion International, that organization, uh, over to Africa to be able to look at some of the missions that they have in various parts of Africa all around. And uh, took us to Uganda first and then went from there over to Kenya. And it was in Kenya that they took us out on a safari. 
a giant Land Rover type vehicle and it had benches in it. We climbed in the back and there were two guides that were, that were in the front two seats and they really kind of reminded me of Steve Irwin, if you can imagine that. They had the strong accents and they had the dress just like him. And they drove us out onto the African safari, out into the plains. And of course, you see all the big, great animals out there, the giraffes, the elephants, the hippos, uh, the crocodiles in the river, and the water buffalo, and, and on and on and on. But the highlight of the trip for me was when they took us to this one little area where you could look out over a field or the grasslands, and you could see a herd of zebra and even some uh, water buffalo grazing out there, as well as, uh, as well as a few gazelles. All together, it was a beautiful, beautiful scene. And then they said, but look closely, look closely. And we looked, and we saw lions crouch down in the grass. And you just watched as they would, they would slowly begin to creep forward with so much patience, it seemed they had. And they'd creep a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And at one point, I wanted to yell out, watch out, zebras! Gazelles, he's coming for you, man. Don't you see it? What are you doing? You're, you're not alert. You're not aware. They're going to get you. They're going to chew you up. They're going to spit you out. They're going to destroy your lives, zebra. And in many ways, I feel the same today. As I look out over the unsuspecting prey. <laughs> so many of us completely clueless that, that Satan is so very near that he's about to pounce He's about to feast on some poor, unsuspecting person. And so that's why we look here at God's word today. Because he says, stay alert. Stay alert. He's coming for you. He's the predator. And you and me and we are the prey. I want to give you, first of all, this morning, what I call three of what I believe to be Satan's top targets today. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list by any measure. Satan has a lot of strategies and a lot of different people that he in particular is going for. But just me as a pastor, this is what I'm witnessing as three of his top targets today. In other words, things that I hear about on the phone, things that I get sent in emails, people knocking on the door of my office. These are some of the top, top targets that Satan has. And the first one that I see is the marriage. The marriage. It seems like now more than ever before, he's attacking the marriage, the couple, the people who, who made vows to one another before God, who made commitments before him, and he's going after that. And so uh, many of us are completely <laughs> fooled by it. For some weird reason, we've believed the lie that, that my spouse is the enemy and that Satan is not. And so I, I, fight, I fight now with my wife or I fight now with my husband and we should not fight with our wife or with our husband. We should fight for our wife and for our husband. And we do that when we understand that there is a predator that is looking to destroy the marriage. All those who are married, stay alert. Watch out. He's so crafty in the way that he's able to sneak in and steal away a partner. 
Don't, don't be oblivious. Don't think that, that this is so innocent, there's nothing to this, and I can, I can go down this path a little bit and everything. No. You're being deceived. You're being fooled. And Satan's almost got it. He's almost got it. That's the first target. The second target that I believe is one of the top three today is our kids. Our kids. And Satan is sneaking in even as we speak to our homes in ways we never conceived that he could get in through that wire that goes through our house and into that TV or through that, through that wire that comes in that, that shoots a beam across the house called Wi-Fi. And those are just a couple of the ways that Satan, Satan is sneaking in and he's targeting our kids. It's not even just in the home, but sometimes it's even outside the home. It's even in our learning institutions. That can be simply a pawn by which he uses to get in and grab the mind of that child. All the while, a parent unsuspecting. All the while, a parent thinking everything's okay. No, nothing going on here. And he's creeping along, getting closer and closer to take down that child. You ever notice, if you ever watch National Geographic and you look at one of those documentaries where it shows the lions going after, maybe, maybe they're going after the water buffalo. They don't want to work too terribly hard, so they always go after the weakest one, right? Right? And oftentimes the weakest one is the baby of the herd, the child of the herd. And if he, can, if he can take down that child, well, he can feast. And Satan, if he can take down that child, oh, the damage that he can do in so many other people's lives. I, st I, I stood right here yesterday and witnessed a father grieving in that seat right there. A father grieving for a son that was taken way too soon. And I also witnessed a son grieving for a father that was taken way too soon. And the predator delights in that. Delights in it. Top target, marriage. Top target, kids. Number three, the third top target I see today is the church family. The church family. And I do believe that Satan has taken full advantage of 2020 and a virus that keeps us from coming together as a body. A virus that keeps us from being in a group where we stand together and we pray together. A virus where we can't be together to encourage one another and lift each other up. I believe he's taken full advantage of division. Division that comes even into the church. And he pits this person against this person and this person against this person. And they did this and so I got to be upset about this and get offended by this. And because of that, I can't be a part of the fellowship. And he's so good at getting us fighting one another. Because, boy, I tell you, a prize for him is if he can take down the bride of Christ. What a joy that would be. If he could take down the bride of Christ, the church of Jesus Christ. The object of his affection, oh, what a prize that would be to take that. What a delight he would have. And so our marriage and our kids and our church family, and we could go on and on and on. But those are top targets. So what do we do? 
What do we do if, if we're alert and if we're realizing he's coming, we're realizing that he's right here creeping up on us, what are we to do? And it's what I call our best defense, and it's outlined for us here in God's Word. I want you to write it down. I'm going to give you four things here this morning. Our best defense, number one, is don't be ignorant of him. Don't be ignorant of him. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. We are not to be ignorant of him. We live in what I call a safety-obsessed culture. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, and I, I don't know how old you are, but, but it's changed a lot since I was a kid. Uh, we used to do things back in my day that would blow the minds of young people today. You know what I mean? Uh, back in my day, uh, we didn't even know what this thing was in the car seat that flapped around that was such a nuisance, Right? We'd tuck it into the seats to get it out of our way, also known as a seatbelt. Nobody wore seatbelts. In fact, back in my day, we would, we'd have a really fun game that we would play as kids. We would stand up in the back of the van while going down the highway, and we would see who could stand up the longest. All the while, my dad having a good time by slamming on the brakes. <laughs> Woo! We're flying around and we're loving it. There was nothing as fun as that, was there? Good times, man. Good times. Back in my day, I think I was three years old and my parents bought me my own BB gun. I was going around the neighbor shooting everything that I could back in my day. There's a lot, but today we are a safety obsessed culture, are we not? We, we engineer things and we over engineer things. We strap the kids in every which way. They can't move, man. Right? We, yeah, we're safety obsessed. And how many of you have heard this last year now more than ever when you say goodbye to somebody instead of, hey, see you later, now it's be safe. Be safe. Okay, you be safe. I'll be safe. We'll be safe. Let's all be safe. And we use that phrase over and over, safety first, safety first, safety first, right? Safety obsessed which is so interesting to me because as safety obsessed as we are, we're still oblivious to the main killer in our lives. We're oblivious to the work of Satan. We're oblivious to how he is able to attack and creep in. And, and it just like it says in John 10:10, 10, 10, his purpose is to steal and to kill and to destroy. To steal and kill and destroy. We are ignorant that he even exists. We're ignorant that he's creeping up. We're ignorant even of his devices, some of the things that he does and the ways in which he tricks us. There's a book. It was written in 1680, long time ago, right? By a man named Thomas Brooks. And, and the name of the book is, is, is this, a kind of funny name really, but it's Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices, written in 1680. And in the book, he lists out all these different way, schemes that Satan has in order to deceive us, the things that he's, he's busy doing. Now, this was written in 1680, but number two on his list, he, he, he said it this way, it's Painting sin with virtuous colors. He said, that's device number two. Painting sin. Do you understand what he's saying right there? Painting sin with virtuous colors. In other words, taking sin and uh, dressing it up. Taking something that is wrong and sinful and saying, that's not bad. In fact, that's good. Do you know in scripture it says that in the last days... 
Men will take what is good and say it's bad and take what is bad and say it's good. I remember that verse from years ago and, and thinking to myself, come on, how could that even happen? How could we be, we wouldn't, we, how could you even be tricked by that? We know what's right and we know what's wrong. Or do we? Do we not see that scheme being played out even today where we take something that we know is good and right and holy and suddenly it's being called bad and terrible and awful and we must get rid of it. And we take something that is completely against God's word and we say, you know what? This is the way to go. This is what we... Do you guys know that in August of 2020, there were a lot of riots out in Portland. But in August of 2020, the riots turned to, in front of the state capitol, a bunch of Bibles being taken and burned in protest. Did you ever think that God's word would be burned in protest here in this country? Guys, watch out. It says here, stay alert. Watch out. Don't think it's not coming. Don't think it's not coming for a second. Don't think it can't happen here. It's already begun. And Satan is flipping it. Stay alert. When you see it, when you watch it, when you hear it, be aware. What is sin is being painted with virtuous colors. Don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant. Several years ago, Kim and I, we, uh, we went to a restaurant in McDonough. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that. And I know, I know, I know some of you are going to come up to me after the service. Hey, hey, why, why, why am I going to tell you? We went to this restaurant in McDonough. We sat down and we ordered our food at this booth, Okay. And they bring out the food. Oh, good food, man. It's t- oh, that's, uh, I'm not even going to describe the food to you, okay? But it was good. And we're enjoying our meal. And then suddenly I'm like, there's something on my back. It's climbing up my back, under my shirt. Oh, and then, ah, ah, it, it came out my collar and I, I hit it and, and went down there and it was a giant cockroach. It crawled on my back. What did we do? We got out of there. Have we ever gone there? Never been there again. Now I tell you that story and I know what's going to happen. Some of you are going to be like, please man, you got to tell us. Oh, tell us the name of the restaurant. You got to, please, I'm begging you, pastor, don't do it. Tell us. Why? Why? Because you don't want to be consuming filth without knowing it, do you? So you got to be on guard and you're saying, I'm going to watch. I got to be careful. I don't want this to happen. But, 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 mm, how often Do we watch something on TV and go, I'm an adult, I can handle it. How often do we listen to a song and says, wow, that's just lyrics to the song, you know, no harm done there. And all the while, we're consuming so much filth, filth for our minds, thinking no harm will be done. And it's just Satan getting a little bit closer to take you down, to take you down. I've told you guys before that there are some shows, TV shows, people have come up to me and they're like, oh my goodness, you have got to watch this. It's like the best ever. It's amazing. And everybody's watching. It's, it's awesome. It's so good. And, and, and I'll, I'll flip it on and just for a minute, then I'll flip it off and I'll go to Kim and I'll say, I can't watch that stuff. I can't watch that stuff because I know how it infests my mind 
And it's just another tactic, another way where Satan is creeping in and creeping up on us. Don't, don't, don't be ignorant of him. I want to, I want to, the, the guy's name is this, Gil Reville, R-E-A-V-I-L-L. And he wrote a book. Um, it's really interesting. But uh, let, me, let me read to you what he said in this book that he wrote. He says, the young are powerless, voiceless, totally reliant on adults. The boundaries of their world have been repeatedly breached many times by people interested in making money and dismissive of all other considerations. He says, all too often our children are exposed to the loud, frenzied, garish spectacle of adult sexuality. They get their faces rubbed in it. The title of his book is A Sex Industry Insider. In parentheses, a concerned father says enough is enough. Who is this guy? This is a guy who made a living in the porn industry since 1980. And he's written for magazine after magazine after magazine. Magazines I can't even mention. What changed? He had a daughter. He had a daughter. And suddenly his eyes were opened. He suddenly he saw all the smut that he had created for so very long was simply being fed right to his own daughter. Why am I telling you this, guys? We can't be ignorant. We can't be ignorant. We can't turn a blind eye. We can't, we can't just sit down and be quiet. We can't just ignore it. But it's doing so much damage, so much damage. Our best defense, number one, is to don't be ignorant of him. Number two, don't fight unprepared against him, okay? Don't fight unprepared against him. You got to arm yourself. Let me first say this. Don't fight alone. Ecclesiastes says that a triple braided cord is not easily broken. In other words, when you have people who will stand with you, When you have people that you answer to, when you have people that you know are they're praying for you, then you're fighting along with somebody. Listen, if you are not in a group somehow, some way, maybe it's even a Zoom group right now, but if you're not in a group, please, please, please find a group that you can get involved in and plug in with where you have other believers warning you, other believers around you, where you have that herd when somebody sees something, they make a noise. They, they yell out. They say, watch out. Here they comes. You need people in your life. So don't fight alone. But then there's this, Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. In other words, the belt surround ourselves with the truth. The truth. Because Satan attacks with lies. He says, in the body armor of God's righteousness or that breastplate that goes right here that guards that heart, that knowing that even though Satan is going to say you are, are unworthy, you are guilty, the breastplate of righteousness says, wait a second now, you're secure. Your heart is secure in the faith and the righteousness that's found through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared shoes to run into battle. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Faith to stop the fiery arrows. Faith, you hold it up. Faith, it's that shield that blocks that shield when he starts shooting those arrows at you. Put on salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Don't fight unprepared, guys. Don't fight unprepared. What we need, and you can picture in your mind, are what I call spiritual gladiators. Suited up, 
in God's word, studying God's word. That's why we can't, we can't afford not. We can't afford not to be worshiping in church with other believers on Sunday. We sing together, we praise together, we pray together, we hear the word of God. It's, it's, it's iron sharpening iron that strengthens us, preparing ourselves. Don't make church an afterthought, please. In Hebrews it says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together, which is the, the manner of some or the habit of some people who, who, who take the church and the worship and, and, and move it from the top priority in their life down to uh, something we could do maybe if we get around to it. It needs to become top priority again, you and your family worshiping God in church, studying God's word. There's so many things that we look around today and Sunday has quickly become the day where we fill it with all sorts of extracurricular activities. And sadly, church has become no big deal. And we begin to see the results of that in this one nation under God. I'm thankful for praying mamas. Praying mamas. Now there's some spiritual gladiators for you right there. My mom was a praying mama. She was. I remember every single morning, my bedroom, walking from there to go downstairs, I'd have to pass by her bedroom, door always cracked, her on her bed praying. And praying for her babies. That's a spiritual gladiator. I'm thankful for my wife. She's a praying mama. Some of you other ladies have joined with her. And, and she prays, and you guys, when, when something happens to one of, the, one of the babies, you guys are sending out messages, I'm praying with you, and I'm praying with you, and I'm standing with you. That's, those, that, those are spiritual gladiators right there. I just read through this whole list, and as I read through that whole list, I know there are some people going, oh, man, I just, I wish, I wish I were a gladiator. I wish I, I wish I knew God's word like that, and I wish I'm one of those, but I fall, I fall so far short. I need, I need that faith. I need that stronger faith for what's going on around me and my family and with my kids. I need, I need a greater faith, and I just want to say this to you. Just want to want to, Okay. Do you know what I mean by that? Just want to, want to. There was a, there was a man who runs up to Jesus one day and his child is dying. And he, he, he comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, please heal my child. And, and Jesus says, well, do you believe? And you know what the guy says? He says, Ugh, help my unbelief. And Jesus goes, enough, that's good. And heals his child. It's a want to want to. Not one of us can, can read through this and go, man, I am always so suited up as a spiritual gladiator. Bring it. But for him, he goes, just want to want to. Call out to me. Call out to me. Lord, help my want to. How am I want to be in your word and studying your word and making sure my family is, is worshiping in church and making sure we have times where we spend praying together and, 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 and equipping us all for the battle. I want to want to. But don't, don't, don't fight unprepared against them. The third thing I want you to write down, number three of our best defense is don't give a foothold to him. Don't give a foothold to him. It says in Ephesians 4, 26, don't let, and don't sin by letting anger control you. 
Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold. Circle the word foothold right there. A foothold to the devil. What are we talking about, a foothold? Uh, I want you to think World War II real quick. World War II, um, D-Day, on the beaches of Normandy. Maybe you've seen a flick or a film or, or some actual footage from that day. And those amphibious vehicles that are coming through the water carrying U.S. and British soldiers up onto the beach. And those doors flop open and they run out to try to take the beach. The reason for D-Day, the reason for that was to get a stronghold or a, a beachhead is what it was called. A beachhead is just a, a simple uh, area of land that you can take and fortify. And then from there, you now begin to push and push and push. And the allied forces were able to get that beachhead and then push through France and on throughout Europe until they reached Berlin and could take down the Nazis. And it's all about getting that one. Satan does the same thing, guys. Satan does the same thing. He gets that foothold, but that foothold then becomes a stronghold that he has in our lives. And he often does it through things such as anger or these emotions. Any emotion can be something where Satan is able to get in and, and begin to take over. Here he says anger. And so often this verse is applied to marriages, and, and rightly so, rightly so. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Don't go to bed angry. In other words, talk and work it out and pray together and pull together. But it also is in all other, this anger can take, take hold of us. It's, it's that foothold where he's able to, he's able to get us and, and that anger. Our anger should be directed towards him, not that person. Seeing him for the enemy that he is. But that anger begins to grow and grow. It becomes resentment. And that resentment takes over and it rots us from the inside out. Or, or how about this? Maybe your foothold is worry. That's, that's a foothold that Satan can get in and he can take that worry and he can start to exploit it. He can, he can cause that worry to grow into fear, overwhelming fear, and then to anxiety that is crippling. And if he can do that and take you out of the game, well, certainly he's gonna do that. Maybe, maybe for you, though, it's not anger or worry, but how about guilt? Is he able to get in with that guilt and just start working you over with that and accusing you and, and, and bringing it up and, 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 and diminishing your value and your worth in the sight of God to the point that you find yourself deeply, deeply depressed and overwhelmed because he, he just had that that foothold of guilt. Here's another one. Here's another one that I think is a foothold and it's a common one for today. It's being offended. It's being, finding ourselves offended. Have you guys realized that social media is not so much about friending people now as it is about being offended by people now? It's like, I'm gonna look to see who really is gonna make me mad today. And I'm going to let them know it, right? And we've become offended. We've become so easily offended. And it becomes that foothold that, that it comes and destroys relationship after relationship after relationship. Those are all those footholds by which he can take us. Let me say this. Compromise will kill, Okay. Compromise is what Satan never, Satan never comes in and takes you from here all the way to here. It's a gradual thing. It's a, it's a one little step after another until you find yourself here and you're going, how in the world did I get here? 
Satan comes in and uh, to, to that man at the office, he says, you know, it won't matter if you flirt a little bit here. It's, it's innocent. It's just in it, no big deal. And they take that step. And then that step leads to another step and to another step. And before you know it, boom. Marriage blown up. Family torn apart. A little step after step. Kim, every once in a while, you know what she does? See, I've, I've, been, I've been trying to eat healthy. I want to eat healthy and talking about eating healthy. Every once in a while she goes, hey, you know what sounds good? The varsity. The varsity. Oh, that does sound good. And, and so, so uh, she's a temptress that way, Okay. But she said, varsity, what do you think about the varsity? And I'm battling, I'm battling in my mind. And in my mind, I I go, okay, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go look and see what, what's healthy at the varsity that I can order. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. And, and so we go to the varsity and I go stand up there at the counter and they're like, what do you have? What do you have? What do you have? What do you have? And it's so much pressure. You know what I mean? And finally I just go, oh, give me just a, a chili cheese dog. And then I look at that chili cheese dog and it's so tiny. And I'm like, okay, give me two, give me two chili cheese dogs. and and put slaw on top because that's my vegetables for the day, right? A little of that slaw. But man, you can't just get two chili. They got those hamburgers too. I got to throw a little hamburger on there too. I want a hamburger and uh, as my side item, um, uh, oh, come on. There are the fries and the onion rings. I shouldn't have to make tough decisions like this, okay? Give me both. I'll take fries and onion rings, and let's top it all off by that point with an orange frosty. Mm. Do you see how that happened? Do you see how that happened? Compromise, compromise, compromise. I wasn't going to, I didn't want to blow it all out on varsity, but I find myself there one day. Compromise, compromise. That's the tactic of Satan. Watch out. Watch out. Don't give him a foothold. Number four, finally. Get this. Declare victory over him. Declare victory over him. Can I say this? We have too many professing Christians who are actually practicing atheists. You know why? We can say, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, I'm Christian, but then cower in fear, thinking that our God's not big enough. It says right here, James 4, 7, humble yourselves before God. That's the first part of this. Humble yourselves before God. When we humble ourselves before God, we're actually going, God, you are the greatest. There is nothing greater than you. Guys, I don't want for a second today for you to take from this message that Satan is, is, is unstoppable. That he's too much. That we are completely doomed. No, I I instead want you to take from this that, yeah, he's coming and he's a predator and he's prey. But you know what? Jesus Christ has already declared victory over him. And because he has, so you can too. Because he has, so you can too. What we need are people Followers of Jesus Christ who are emboldened by his spirit, who will not be silent, who will not run in fear, but instead will take on that beast. Interesting thing about lions. I had you underline the word roaring lion. A lot of people don't know this. But the male lion with all the mane, the patriarch of the pride, does very little actual hunting himself. 
He leaves that to the lionesses. They can hide a little better in the grass without all the mane. But what he does is he shows himself and he roars. He's loud and intimidating. And he roars and gets the prey to run from him. Opposite direction where the lionesses are crouched down waiting. So Satan is a roaring lion. And the moment we run and cower in fear from him, we've doomed ourselves. God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but one of power and love and of a sound mind. Guys, in Jesus Christ, in him, we will stand up and say, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And enough is enough. He can't have my kids. He can't have my family. He can't have my marriage. He can't have my my church. He can't have those things. But we will fight. We will fight. We will stare him down. We will run towards the roar and watch Satan cower at the name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow in prayer. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, you're lost. You're lost. There's no hope. But if you do, you don't have to live in fear. He's already defeated the evil one. Friend, come to Jesus, please. If you never accepted him as your savior, here now, right in this moment, call out to him, say, Jesus, I do believe that you died for me on the cross. And right now, the best I know how, I'm receiving you as my savior. Forgive me of my sins and be my God and my savior and my friend forever and ever. Friend, when you pray something like that, mean it with your heart. Jesus, I need you. Come into my life. The Bible says you can know you have eternal life. You're his and he's yours forever and ever. Nothing can separate you from his love. Best decision you will have ever made. If you did pray that prayer, I want you to let somebody know. Come tell me, maybe tell one of the other pastors. Tell the person near you that you're you're sitting with here today. Let them know that you accept Christ as your Savior. If you're online, please send something in, a message that I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ today. We want to encourage you and pray for you with that. Father, I thank you so much for those who here today entered into your kingdom as your children. And Father, I pray that you would embolden us that you would give us that strength of heart to stand up, stare down, and through the power of your son, Jesus Christ, take on that deceiver. Father, we wanna see the victory. We wanna see the predator now become the prey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Pastor Glenn. What's up, man? Pastor Bo, great job. Great challenging truths for us Appreciate to it, man. Uh, meditate upon today. Great <clears throat> stuff. A uh, couple quick announcements, then we'll take the offering. Um, some exciting news. This is kind of a teaser this morning. More information coming. But one of the things that has been so exciting that we've done together as a church is impact nations and people in other countries uh, by helping them, by building facilities. 
And uh, some of us may never go to these countries, but we've been able to impact the people there. And we've got an exciting opportunity, an exciting mission project coming up that we'll yeah. reveal more when we get enough details to tell you, but just kind of wanted to get you thinking and praying about that. Yeah, stay tuned. I'm very excited about this, and I know I know everybody will be as well, but uh, that's all we can say. That's all we can say Okay, right top now. secret yeah. until later, but it's exciting stuff.